and welcome to Dear Hank and John. Or as I prefer to think of it, uh, Dodie and Hank. <laughs> Hello, Dodie. Uh, this is a comedy podcast about death, where me and my brother John, and sometimes guest guests, uh, answer your questions, give you dubious advice, and bring you all the week's news from both Mars and AFC Wimbledon. But maybe not AFC <laughs> Wimbledon today. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, but you're so close, you could just go by and check. I know, but I still have absolutely no idea. I literally had to Google what it was. I'm sorry to add to the stereotype that <laughs> I have no idea about sport, but that's me. Sorry. <laughs> well, I mean, it's not like you have no idea about sports that are like a big deal in your country. You probably do, but this is, I don't, to be clear, have any idea about sports that have are a big deal in my country. But AFC Wimbledon isn't like, it's not like Manchester United. Yeah, I, I still wouldn't know anything about that. Honestly, that's just one of the things I right. step away from in life. Doesn't have any importance. Right, to me. yeah. It stresses me out too much if to being involved with sports. Like, get, get, uh, cause like the, they, they always lose eventually. <laughs> like, it's just so extremely unlikely that your team is gonna win all the way. Yeah. That, uh, like, it's always gonna end up in disappointment. And except for that one time when it doesn't, and then next year it will. Wow. And that's how it works. Wow. Unless you're the Yankees, and then you win all the time because you have all the money. There are probably a lot of people who are very angry about your pessimistic viewpoint of sport, but honestly, I would agree. Oh, no. Well, you know, they're not probably... I hope they're not angry. I hope that they just have a different opinion, and yeah. I respect their different opinion. That would be nice. Okay. Um, how, are, how are you doing, Dodie? I'm good. I'm just really busy. I've just been doing far too much. I kind of... Like, my past self was just very... And empathetic and went, here you go, here's everything, you can handle it, and now I'm dying. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, me. I, uh, well, when you, when you said yes to doing this podcast, I, I said, never mind, I know how busy you are, let this I be know. the thing that you don't do. I know. But you did it anyway. I know, because I wanted to, and because I enjoyed them, and also because I was meant to be done with a lot of big things, so I was like, oh, I'll be in my free time, but... I see a space right. in my calendar and You're I not. fill it and then I'm like, why Why would I do that? But I enjoy it, so yeah. why not? I know, I, I do the same thing and, and I have taken on too much as well, but the recording of Dear Hank and John is one of the things that I look forward to throughout uh, the week. Yeah. And, um, and whenever I see it on my calendar the next day, I'm like, oh, thank goodness, that will be a nice hour <laughs> of hanging out with either my brother or someone else I like. And uh, and it doesn't feel like work, which I, is why I do it. I cannot believe the amount of things that you take on. It's unbelievable. I was listening to one of these and you were just listing everything that you do. And it was just like, what? <laughs> so much. Well, I mean, I, like, I think you do more than I do. I just have more help. I don't know. I Ma don't know. <laughs> Uh, my, my, so, so maybe this should be like some, some like uh, group therapy time. Like, how do you, what do you need to get past this difficult time where, where your former self has been un unempathetic to your current self? What's, what services, what humans, what help? Because it, like it's out there and it can be, it can be very hard once you're busy to mm. fix your busyness because you're too busy to put any time yeah, this is into the thing. fixing it. Everyone's always like, just say no. And like, it's okay to say no. And you need to prioritize your time. And it's like, that's all very well. But when I'm in the point when it's happening and I haven't done that, now what? <laughs> you just have to keep going. You just have to <laughs> go through. That's what all yeah. my friends say. They're like, yeah. you can do it. I'm like, I don't want to do it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's not like you can. Uh, it's not like you can hire an assistant in the moments when when you're working eighty hours a week I because hiring <laughs> an assistant takes time. Exactly. Like you have to. Yeah, but uh, these are all lovely problems to have. Do you do you want to know another lovely problem to have, Dodie? What is that? When when you signed into the podcast questions document where we've got all our questions, yeah, you weren't logged in, so oh. you're just instead of a picture of Dodie, it's a picture of a cute little otter. <laughs> You're just the anonymous otter, because oh. that's how Google Docs handles it. It like assigns you a random animal, and you got the best animal of all. Good. Except possibly armadillos. <laughs> that would do. Yeah, a little otter. So, oh, cute. Thank you for being a little otter on this episode of Dear Hang and John. Do you have a short poem for us? I do. It's actually the ending of a poem, um, because I was flicking okay. through my friend Savannah's book, Savannah Brown. She has a, a poetry mm, book called mm -hmm. Graffiti. Um, and I found this on, its, uh, on a page by itself, 
Um, and I thought it was just one poem, but it's actually the end of it. But I think it's perfect, and it sums up uh, what I've been thinking about recently. Okay, shall I read it? Yes, please. Okay. Nothing is too pure to avoid being sliced away slowly by each passing second. There's a comfort in knowing that there is an end to each elation and tragedy. There is an end, and I think that is the only thing we can be sure of. Ta-da! <laughs> Very dear Hank and John. Right? Of you. Thanks! <laughs> and yes, you can look at it and be terrified by it, but I think there's so much beauty and comfort in that. I think it was just mm-hmm. really nice. It's been, it's like, I've been thinking a lot about how in uh, about time and like the happy moments i just want to hold on to it because i'm like no i don't want it to end but it's also like appreciate it in the moment but then also in the terrifying horrible moments there's an end (laughs) indeed indeed uh well we now have to move to questions from have to want to must (laughs) excitedly move to questions (laughs) from our listeners Uh uh I don't know. There are so many weird and great and also heartfelt and scary and big ones. I'm not even sure where to start. I guess I guess I'll start with this first one from David, who asks, Dear Hank and Doty, I was reminiscing the other day of, uh, about my youth, and I came across a stunning uh, realization. It's pretty troubling, and I wonder if you could shed some light on it. <laughs> I could certainly understand why Shoddy would wear the apple-bottom jeans and the boots with the fur, especially if she wanted to look nice at the club. <laughs> However, why would Shoddy wear apple-bottom jeans and the boots with the fur and baggy sweatpants, let alone the Reeboks with the straps? Isn't this overkill? Who in their right mind would wear two sets of pants and two sets of shoes? Does Shoddy have four legs? Is Shoddy a centaur? This would explain why the whole club was, quote, looking at her because centaurs don't frequent nightclubs. But if this is the case, why would she be called Shoddy? Centaurs are usually pretty tall. Any explanation would be helpful as this has completely shaken my entire worldview sleepless and disturbed David. I don't know that you've left any room for us to have a good time, David. It seems like you explored the bit pretty fully. Wow. Do you have any... Do, what, are you, what are you thinking? Um, look, maybe they're cold. Maybe they couldn't decide. I change up my outfit sometimes, <laughs> you know, keeping some spare <laughs> shoes in my bag. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, maybe maybe she got maybe the jeans got tight and she like so like between that first section of the of the chorus and the second sh- section of the chorus, yeah. she goes to the bathroom Especially and changes because the over. the yeah she wanted something a little more comfortable and so she changed into the baggy sweatpants and the Reeboks with the straps. What are possibly bottom jeans? I don't actually I don't think I ever uh, knew. Just yeah, go, go ahead and Google it. Uh, right. I don't know if I I don't know if I can tell you without feeling like dirty man. Okay, what are <laughs> apple uh, bottom jeans? They're Is like it? jeans that make your butt look like an apple. Oh. And sometimes they actually have an apple on them. They're okay. just like hold up images. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's a lot of butts. <laughs> okay, just, <laughs> that's what yeah, I'm looking yeah, at currently. You know. <laughs> All right, okay. Uh, interestingly, uh, one of the selections, so you know how when you go on Google search and there's uh, all the things that are like extra, mm. you can add this search term. Mm-hmm. So it to, it's like, oh, that wasn't what I was looking for. One of them is horse. So maybe horses do wear apple bottom jeans? Oh. No. My goodness. <laughs> Oh my gosh, this is reminding um, no, me of No, this that, is a um, this is a meme. There's that question where it's <laughs> like a, where would the pant where would it wear the pants? Would it wear it like <laughs> Do you mm-hmm. know what I'm talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know what you're talking about. The dog wearing pants. Yeah. Yes. Um <laughs> The uh, the there is it there is a horse meme apple bottom jeans boots with the fur and it is a furry footed horse Where? and we'll put it on the Patreon for you so everybody can see it. I'm not, um, hold up. Where are you looking? I'm just gonna put in apple bottom jeans horse. I clicked on I clicked on oh, horse. Oh, there I, I, it is. Apple bottom jeans horse. Yeah, there you see it. Wow, this is that's all. So my question. So I'm pretty sure that Shadi is not a, a centaur because she turns around and she gives her big booty a slap <laughs> at one point in the song. And I don't know that a centaur could reach their own butt. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that so that unless like a, just a really long torso short horse parted centaur, which now that looks really weird in my head. <laughs> this song is going to mean something very different the next time I listen to it. <laughs> Wow. Get, yeah, <laughs> David. I, I, uh, I, I do like the, I do like the M image of a centaur getting low, like just sort of like like sagging down oh, with the yeah. song until it's like 
got its knees bent all the way. <laughs> um, uh, is it its front? Is it both? Is it all four legs or is it just the back where its front legs are like sitting up like it's a sitting like a dog with the butt going? I don't know. Let's not. I'm, I feel weird about objectifying this horsewoman now. <laughs> this is just a, a strange image that's happening in my head right now. I'm enjoying it. Good. Good. I'm glad I've done that to you. <laughs> oh, do you want to ask another question? Dear Hank and Dirty, the person I had thought I was going to spend the rest of my life with recently decided that they are just not in love with me anymore. I've mostly been dealing with this by crying, drinking, and re-listening to all of Dear Hank and John. Any other tips for dealing with heartbreak and the dispa- uh, dissipation of the majority of your future plans? Um, from Melissa. Wow. Well. Mm. Um, yes, I've been thinking about ah. this a lot recently. Um, you have? Yeah. I, I, def- I, I have definitely thought about this a lot in my life. Luckily, I haven't been thinking about it a lot recently. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yes, w- when... When there is this thing that you have, like, this is the thing that I'm doing, and, and like, here's the path that I'm on, and suddenly it's like, zunk. Yeah. No, you're not. Yeah, that must be so difficult. It's I a lot to reconstruct. Yeah, I can't even imagine, because I've been through breakups, but there's never really been that sort of, this is it, this is my life, this, like, massive plan ahead of me. So I can't imagine what that mm-hmm. feels like to have your timeline sort of disrupted. But um, there is a book that my friends have lent me. <laughs> A few times um, and it's called uh, it's, <laughs> it's called a breakup because it is broken and I think that really kind of helps to like sum it up uh, there is a reason uh, for why this has happened and if you can't find it yet you will find it in time um, but all I can say is for now it sucks damn damn yeah and as far as moving forward sometimes it's impossible to but I uh, in the past I've tried to do new things and try new things and uh, and like listen to music I wouldn't have listened to before mm-hmm. and um, and do things I wouldn't have done before, which kind of gives me the feeling of like, oh well, there are there have always been infinite paths ahead of me, and there was never just one. Ah, yes. And um, and uh, and and now maybe I'm going to find one that is different maybe it's better maybe it's equally good maybe it's worse but it is a path and um and 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 like sort of breaking the hold that the old path had on me yeah and that's not an that never that's not a thing that you can do immediately but is it is a thing that comes yeah. and that you can you can with intention sometimes speed along a little bit yeah and as soon as you start to sort of get that closure from yourself and start the processing process uh, the sooner you'll feel better and god that's going to be hard to do for a long time oh, mm-hmm. oh, uh, oh I'm sorry Melissa write a song about it too that's, yes that's what Dodie does heck yeah although a lot of my friends say <laughs> oh it's going to be good for your art when something hurts and it's that's oh, not what you need yeah, yet no. but yes <laughs> in time make things uh, um, yeah uh, this next question is from Anonymous uh, actually, at the bottom says anonymous squirrel, which is interesting because we're here with anonymous otter. <laughs> Dear Hank and, and Dodie, the I've been dating. I've been <laughs> <laughs> but no, <laughs> centaur is completely anonymous. Everyone knows. She's got a whole song about her. <laughs> I've been dating my boyfriend for over three years. We're very happy. <laughs> I feel like bad answering this question yeah, after the sorry, last Melissa. one. We're very happy in my. <laughs> Sorry. And my family members now regard him as part of our family. I'd never told my family that he and I met on Tinder. (laughs) Frankly, I wasn't even sure if they knew what Tinder was. Well, recently, they've been making jokes about how they think Tinder is gross and creepy. I've just sat there awkwardly when they say such things. Do I have an obligation to tell them how we met? Part of them feels like I'm keeping a secret from them, but another part of me uh, feels like it's necessary for them to know. Especially if they... Oh. But another part of me feels like it isn't necessary for them to know, especially if they have already formed a negative impression of the app. Do you think I should tell them? And if so, how? Memento Mori, Anonymous Squirrel. I'm glad you're so anonymous, because otherwise, I don't know, does your family listen to the pod? Yeah. And, uh, and then they would, they would know. Uh-oh. They, th- this is certainly not a situation other people have ever been in. Although that uh, might not be a bad uh, idea. Uh, just, just get them to listen to whatever we're about to say. <laughs> <laughs> Which is... Uh, 
I don't think you have an obligation to tell them. Yeah. Uh, and I think that I, I think making fun of Tinder is a fun thing. I think saying it's creepy is another thing because it's basically saying that like people are put off by the idea of people looking for relationships in a certain way or looking for certain kinds of relationships. And that's a thing that we do, but it's a little bit discouraging that it's something that your family might do. But Tinder is a perfectly legitimate way to meet someone. Uh, and if you like them, continue to date them. Yeah. Like, it's not just, yeah, it's, it's yeah. It, and, uh, you know, I, like, it's easy to have a bad view of Tinder if you don't know very much about it. Just like w- for the first two years that I was using Snapchat, everybody was like, who are you sending nudes to? And I'm like, oh, God, it's uh, getting old. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I definitely it, agree. Yeah, this sort of immediate reaction. Yeah, I agree that there's no obligation to do whatever. I mean, the fact is that you're very happy and everything's all great. Um, but, uh, I don't really know. Let me see. Yeah. Yeah, yeah just, yeah. I, eventually, someday, somebody would be like, like, how did you meet? And you just say, like, oh, uh, internet dating app. Yeah. Internet dating service. Yeah, you can you twist can, it. You and don't like, need to say the name. <laughs> yeah. Or or you will eventually come to embrace it and be like, Tinder, I thought we were just going to maybe smooch a little bit, and it turned out that we fell in love. <laughs> or maybe I was there for love, and I found it. I don't know. I haven't used Tinder. I don't know what it's like. I'm old, and I've been married <laughs> for decades. <laughs> I haven't used Tinder in a while. Should I? No. I don't know. I guess you can find love. Okay. All right, moving um, on. It's, I definitely, like... I. I my, so I have several friends who are uh, single and have internet audiences, and it can be a little weird to use dating services that put your face on there. Yeah, I've because you never know that. when people are gonna be like, "Ooh, swipe that person." I know that person from YouTube. Yeah, there's this um, other app for uh, quotation influencers, um, but you have to get a reference for it. And <laughs> so, what? <laughs> yeah. What? There's an app for dating internet people? Yeah, or like influencers. I think it's like for people with, I don't know, for people who no. have recognizable faces. Oh, you're freaking joking with me. There aren't enough people. <laughs> I mean, I guess I live in a small town. I know all the people who have internet presences in my town. It's like uh, me, people that I work directly with, <laughs> and this one guy who has a farm blog. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I guess it's for like. But I, I guess know, in London. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, but it's just really goodness. funny to see like all of my friends going, oh, does anyone have a reference for this app? <laughs> and it's all just like, oh, I'm lonely and single. <laughs> Uh, but really, lonely. If, if anyone listening has a reference for the Myra app, do let me know. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you get one. Oh, my God. Lonely and internet famous. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, weird, weird like world a, that we're in. What's the, like, uh, just funny. That's a funny thing. <laughs> uh, the, like the contrast. Yes. The juxtaposition. Hey, I'm so popular. And not at all. Please help. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so popular. I can't get a reference for the internet dating app for people who... Yeah. Oh, man. That's really... Oh, oh wow. Dear. There's an app for everything, I guess. Um, dear Brothers of Green. I'm not a brother of green, but hopefully I can help. I have trouble keeping conversations going, and recently I have tried to be better than just letting the conversation fad off, and we both look at our phones. Do you have any trusty conversation starters you could lend to a novice like me? Panic, anxiety, Mary. Ooh. Mm. Yes. Uh, how do you how do you talk to people, Dirty? Wow. Well, um, firstly, put your phone away. Um, I've noticed, um, mm-hmm. like, whenever <laughs> sometimes I talk to friends and their phone light up, phone lights up, and immediately like it's like oh you're not listening so if that happens turn your phone over or put it in your bag um Mm -hmm. okay let me see trusty conversation starters ah i have a friend called tom rosenthal and he's great at these you just have to be wacky (laughs) yeah let me see (laughs) ah oh my friend sammy okay my friendship group has a great way to start a conversation just play would you rather um but make it really weird okay Mm. here's one here's one for you hank would you rather Mm -hmm. would you rather have Mm -hmm. a hand that is made entirely of delicious ham 
and you can eat from it, it doesn't hurt you, it's just never ending and it's just wonderful. Or would you rather have an armpit that excretes sun cream and you can use it whenever you need it? I mean, you talk about these things as if they're both pluses. Like, would you rather <laughs> always have a, a delicious ham hand or always have a ready, ready supply of sunscreen? But I'm imagining it like, well, first of all, I don't want to not have a hand. Like, I need both of them. Yeah. And second, I also don't want to have sunscreen. This is such a dividing I question. I Honestly, like, the amount of what? people... Like, yeah, genuinely. Some people are like, well, obviously this one and then it's like completely different to what you would think it would be this is there you go here's your well, conversation I, starter okay. you're welcome is my ham hand is my ham hand a functioning hand no like or is it just, just a bunch of ham it's just, <laughs> <laughs> it's just you'd have all of the complications that would come with having a hand a ham hand <laughs> Right, so it doesn't have like muscles in it. It's not like so. So yeah, I wouldn't lose use of my hand just so I could have ham all the but time. But you can solve world hunger. You'd never be you'd never be hungry again. You you never have to pay for food. You wait, just... could I wait, Dodie? Did you say could I could I solve world hunger with my ham hand? <laughs> Maybe. Like, is it that infinite? Could I just like keep chopping and like there yeah. would always be more ham? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, well if it grows ham at like an infinite rate. And I could actually feed the the world with it, then maybe. But otherwise, I'd have to go with sunscreen. But I wouldn't like that either. Can we just know? But these are how very long... good. You've you've started a very good conversation. Yeah. How long have we been chatting? It's been a while. There you go. Ham yeah. hands yeah. or sunscreen armpits. I mean, I have I have uh, so I like at my age. You, you end up with several distinct friend groups. Uh, you know, you got my friends from high school, yeah. my friends from college, and my friends from work, and my friends from internet, and friends from other... So I have a friend group that has been having a, t like, I don't know, five, six-year-long conversation about whether they would rather eat chocolate-flavored poop or poop-flavored chocolate. Oh, my God. Oh. And it, like, it... Whenever I see them, they're, they're, they're like... Okay, new modification to the chocolate flavored poop question. <laughs> and like, uh, I know that we've all got our positions, but what if we added an additional condition? <laughs> and like, years have gone by and, and it has not been settled. Wow. Wow. Well, there you go. Would you, would you, would you, would you rather have chocolate no, flavored poop or poop, poop flavored chocolate? This. I don't know. <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay, let me, let me think. Um, Oh god, it would have to be poop flavored chocolate. It's like when you eat those jelly beans that are different flavors. Would you rather have a vomit flavored jelly bean or jelly bean flavored vomit? I don't want to eat vomit. Oh no. <laughs> no. Yeah, we come in on different different sides of this. I would I would rather eat chocolate flavored poop because how would I even know the difference? There are so many different textures I think it would of just chocolate. Be knowing it would be knowing that that's what's happening. That would mess me you up. You know, I kind of feel the, the same way about black sausage, that stuff you have in Ugh, the UK. That's why I don't like eat blood, it. Blood sausage. I literally cannot eat that stuff. Yeah, like... Black pudding, yeah. No, like, I leave I'll, it out. I will eat it and I'll be like, this is so delicious and I don't like it. It's just blood. I just can't do it. No. See, <laughs> can't even do it. I had eggs this morning and like halfway through them, I was like, oh no, I don't want to think about what I'm eating. No. Gross. Oh, yeah. I don't have a problem with eggs. They're not like they're not like a, a baby animal. I just, they're just no, all of the. Course. I don't know. Yeah, no, but I think it's don't just give the fact me a heart. Don't don't tell inside. me don't tell me reasons to be upset with with eggs because I love eggs. <laughs> I know and if I you, love if eggs If you too. Get, make me weird about them, no, no, then I'll, I know. I'll freak I just out block and, it out. And have a less good life. I somehow have the ability <laughs> to block that out. Um. Yeah. Well, there you go. Talk um, about poop -poop but yeah, chocolate. it is good to have. <laughs> yeah, it's good to have things like this in your pocket. Another thing you can do. And this is totally sanctioned. As long as your friends don't listen to Dear Hank and John, take one of the questions from Dear Hank and John and say, like, make it a hypothetical hey, or make it into, it. like, something that your friend is going yeah. through or, or like, uh, and be like, like, hypothetically, what would you do if, and then take this next question that I'm about to ask about burritos because I thought it was amazing. It's from Logan <laughs> who asks, uh, Dear Hank and Dodie, I am 12. I am composing a menu for my burrito bike. 
This is where I will go around town on a bike that has a cooler on the back. And in the cooler will be burritos. I am currently trying to come up with a menu. What is the style of burritos that you like? Example, what do you like on them? What type of shell? What type of sauce? What type of meat? Etc. Don't forget to be awesome, Logan. Wow. Like, so help we so like now now everybody at the table is like okay we got to help out this twelve year old kid hypothetical twelve year old kid Logan who is <laughs> starting up his burrito bike business which I love yeah what a I cool wish question. there was a burrito bike in my town oh my gosh I would totally totally get that that's amazing <laughs> so I do have a couple of questions for Logan one is is the burrito cold or warm yes like is the cooler to keep them cold or is it to keep them warm because cooler main can't keep burritos warm. But, like, I'm not totally opposed to cold burritos. I'm not even opposed to lukewarm I, burritos, honestly. Right. Yeah, You like, uh, I, I mean, I'm a little opposed because I want to know that they're at the temperature they're supposed to be at and they haven't just been sitting there for a day. Because uh, yes. I, like, 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 pro tip, Logan, not everybody's going to trust you because yeah. you're 12. Yeah. And that's not, no fault of your own, but, like, you got to, like, yeah. you just haven't, you don't know all of the even, things that everybody even knows. Even buying and, cupcakes. So from people like, are going to be a little skeptical. Yeah, from, like, bake yeah. sales. It's a bit, okay, well, thanks. <laughs> yeah, don't know. Did you wash your hands, little buddy? Uh, a dirty, dirty little, little baker man. <laughs> um, Sorry, Logan. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I feel like maybe going simple is the way to go and just doing, like, like, have it say like bean and cheese burritos oh, and yeah. there's a there's a certain simplicity to that and also like i don't necessarily like there's not like when i like a really good burrito is going to have some hot ingredients but that like but like re-microwaving a burrito one you're going to get it a little bit soggy two then you're like the salsa and the guacamole is hot and i kind of like yeah, for those we'll ingredients to be at their like not like soup like like salsa does, shouldn't necessarily be hot yeah I so agree. uh the uh yeah so if it's going to be reheated you got to take that into account and then also i'm thinking like maybe vegetarian just because there's a little less chance of food poisoning yeah for your burrito bike gosh I have, this is, uh, I really but i love your entrepreneurial go-getter attitude logan i miss being and the age I, when these things all seem so possible and like why doesn't everyone <laughs> do this this is going to be my life now i'm going to be a burrito biking guy yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, what if there was just an army of burrito children who were all over your town at any time and you could just like push a button on your app and they'd be there in like three minutes? I'm pretty sure that's called like Uber Eats. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying Uber, but for food, Hank. I think there might be a thing that's called also, Uber, but for food. <laughs> I like the idea of them being 12 a little bit. And I like the idea of, of like eliminating the choice from it. So instead of being like, oh, I have to like pick what yeah, restaurant I'm going to get food so. from. It's just like, like there's one choice delivered to me a 400 calorie bean and cheese burrito mm. with some sauce on it. You're that's right. not going to be great, but it's not going to be bad, but it's going to be here very fast. And it's going to be delivered by a child named Logan, who's helping to pay for his uh, class trip to Louisiana. I love this idea. Let's write a movie about it. Slash make it happen. <laughs> 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 I like that. I like making a movie about it better. Yeah. Once upon a time, and this was when I was after I had graduated from college. I thought, why don't I start a thing? Because I lived in Orlando, Florida, where there's lots of traffic and the, the stoplights mm -hmm. at, at like, um, at like areas where there's like highway interchanges. The stoplights can be three or four minutes long. Oh. It's crazy. Like you just sit there. Ugh. I was like, why don't I just like set up shop at one of those and sell people sandwiches and cokes? That's idea that is a good idea I'm, I'm pretty sure that it's illegal one oh. but in a second like i it's also kind of feels like the kind of thing that somebody who doesn't have a biochemistry degree would do with their time <laughs> i don't necessarily know that it would be like a super lucrative <laughs> enterprise but maybe you are allowed to just do be whatever like whatever ding like ding 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 cokes and cokes and sandwiches ding ding also, and I'd people just worried. stop to be like oh that'd be nice I, I won't have to stop on the way home i could get home faster and uh and i could have a coke or a coffee and Boom. What if you got run out But of instead, I became an internet personality. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah, sure. Why not? But you could always turn it could, around. Could have been you anything. You never know. There's, there's it's never, true. That idea is still there. Too late. Exactly. Okay, let's see. 
Uh, this question comes from Clara. Uh, dear Hank and Dodie. Yesterday I hit a fly in my room because it was noisy and I wanted to sleep. When I was a small child and afraid of flies, my parents told me that all flies were my friends and called Anton. Anton is not moving anymore and I assume he is dead. <laughs> I feel bad about it. I also need sleep. Am I a monster? Should I at least give him a proper burial? Do I have to inform the other Antons? Any dubious advice would be appreciated. Clark. <laughs> Oh, Jody D- also is is strategically avoiding all of the Latin sign offs that people are. Oh people yeah, are I can't read that. Like I said, not knowledgeable, no idea, cannot read that. Most you have. I mean, I me? I just have to Google them. Everybody is being very yeah. Uh, I think that that means your death, my life. Oh wow. <laughs> Which is like something maybe soldiers say to each other on the <laughs> battlefield, and I don't know if she's talking to Anton or to us, because uh, hopefully to Anton. Probably uh, to That's a little upsetting to think, maybe us. Uh, do you ever feel uh, abnormal amounts of empathy for things that you oh, normally wouldn't, gosh. like just the situation? This is like, such a conflicting like usually... question. I mean, I am, yes, yes. Like, for example, the, Sammy, who we were talking about earlier, has this funny joke where he'll... He'll say, look, there's a little rabbit on my hand. There's a little rabbit, look at him. And then obviously my brain goes, there's a rabbit on Sammy's hand and feels immediate empathy towards this tiny little imaginary creature. And then he'll like pretend to throw it on the floor or something or like describe his horrible death. And it's like, no, no. (laughs) So, yeah. (laughs) Yes, indeed. (laughs) That's awful. Why is that so upsetting? I know, right? That's fascinating. Like, why play this game with your friends? But the Why thing play is, this game and cre- and make I, a sadness occur? I usually don't feel any empathy towards flies or bugs, especially spiders. My goodness, you'll never know what like you you'll never want to know what I've done to spiders. But the moment you name it, like if if I called every mm-hmm. fly Anton, I I agree. I'd have to give them all burials and sign off in Latin with <laughs> meaningful quotes. <laughs> Yeah, no. Uh, we I believe we've had a question on Dear Hank and John before about like uh, about bee murder, um, and so it's not even new ground we're treading here. I feel like we still have to explore it though because it's a strange thing. I occasionally, this is almost upsettingly dumb. Okay. I occasionally will like be walking down the street, and I'll kick a rock, and then I'll kick the rock again, and then I'll kick the rock like a fourth time, and I'll be like, well, now I'm kicking the rock. <laughs> now this is a thing I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. And like I'll, and then I'll like accidentally kick it into the grass, and I'll be like, "Oh, now I have to find the rock." <laughs> and so I like look for the rock, and I get the rock. And like, to be clear, there's a thousand other rocks around, every identical <laughs> no. to the one that. But I find the one that was my rock, and I put it back in the street, and I start kicking it. And then I arrive at home, and I'm like, "Well, now I have a rock." <laughs> what do I do? Do I take it in? Do I continue this is, to kick? This is. The, yeah, it's, this is now my rock. Like, I now have an emotional connection to this rock. And I'm like, like literally have several of these rocks in a flower planter oh, wow. in the back of my house. Oh, you definitely have well, like, Well, I can't just me. get rid of you. <laughs> I'm connected to this. Like, I had a whole, like, and now I'm not anymore. Like, I could throw them away now. But, I, like, at the moment, I can't just, like, leave it in the road. This is honestly heartwarming. I think I might shed a tear. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, you have like gone up several levels in my mind. That is just the most adorable (laughs) thing I've ever had. (laughs) Okay. Well, I'm glad that glad, uh, to to some I'm sure I've gone down, and to others I've gone up. <laughs> uh, but but as for Anton, uh, oh yes, back to the uh, Anton was gonna gonna die in one way or another, and How you needed your sleep, live? Clara. I'm gonna I'm gonna go uh, longer this. than you'd think, actually. Yeah. Oh, really? How long do flies live? I think they live days. like a like a month. <laughs> yeah. There's like a picture of it, and I hate it. Ugh, gross, gross. gross. <laughs> Uh, 28 days. That's that's quite a long time Is for it? a bug. That's all right. I wonder what the longest, like, longest bug life. Internet, how long can a bug live? <laughs> there is at least one species of longhorned beetle that beats out the cicada with its ability to survive in larval form in dead wood for 35 to 50 years. Whoa. Whoa. Wow. Whoa. Ah, 
That's horrible. I that's a bug that lives as low. Wow. Wow. You can have it as a I, friend. This is good stuff. As a pet. Oh, but, oh, there's more. Oh. There's, whoa, okay. Oh, my god. Can goodness. I just point out, like, oh, the moment wow. anyone talks about bugs, I feel like my entire skin is crawling with everything. Like a hair I'm itching my elbow my right now. Yeah. yeah, and I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want it. No. Um... Are you, just, are you just having fun researching? Uh, some, well, okay, I'm just reading that. I'm just reading on this page that, in fact, there are some termite queens that live longer than sixty years. Uh, that's. Uh, what was that little? What was that little noise, dude? Are you okay? I, just, I don't like this conversation at all. I hate it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> well, let's move on. Let's move on to another question that's not about bugs. All right. Um, Make sure, making sure this one isn't about bugs. Okay, this one isn't about bugs. This one, this one's good. I think this is interesting, and I, I think that we might be good people to talk about it. Okay. This one's for Manny, who asks, "Dear Hank and Doty, I need some help living as a human, as I think I've missed out on some crucial instructive material. Unfortunately, I'm going to graduate from uni soon, and I'm not a go-getter. Not like Logan selling burritos on the street. How do I succeed in life as a non-go-getter?" There are classmates of mine who are go-getters, and it is clear they are going to be successful. Hank is a go-getter, and I understand that this is the ideal way to live life. I'm air-quoting now. This is just what this person is saying. I'm not confident and self-assured enough to put myself out there and hunt opportunities down, but this is what I need to do, or I can't be a satisfactory people. <laughs> I am scared. I think my question is, can I change my ways? Is there a manual I can read on how to put myself out there and hunt down opportunities and sell burritos on the street? I don't know if I can be an artist if I continue to only do things people say I should do. Are there any careers that don't require go-getting for success? Any dubious advice would be appreciated. Scared and confused and mementoing Mori, Manny. I have so much uh, to say about this. I thought you might. I like. I want to start out by saying I totally like the thing that you talk about there in the middle, Manny, where um, where you just have done the things that other people have told you to thus far in life. That's, that was a hundred percent me. Uh, like Hank, that is everyone. until like my thirties. Is everyone? Yeah. Everyone is lazy. No <laughs> one is a go getter naturally. I assure you. If they if they are then except for Logan well, and his burritos. Oh yes, of course. <laughs> oh yeah, Logan's like living life. <laughs> Um, yeah, like pretty much, I, honestly, I think everyone secretly thinks that they're lazy. Isn't there like a name for that? What is that? Uh, it's like, oh, oh there's like syndrome. imposter syndrome. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's like, oh, when's everyone going to find out that I'm secretly the laziest, most incompetent person ever? And yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, uh, I literally have employees whose job it is to tell me to do things to like make me do stuff yeah um and i and without them like i wouldn't i wouldn't and would like you define my, yourself as my a secret yeah i would yeah. at this point i would, I would. now but yeah. like that took that took me a while and it took and it took like a, a kind of insecurity to make me do it. Now, I wasn't a go-getter because I was naturally a go-getter. I, I, I think maybe very much like many, I was a go-getter because I was afraid that like otherwise uh, I wouldn't be satisfactory people, as many puts it. Mm, yeah. Um, and, uh, but like you will, you will be satisfactory people without being a go-getter. The, the, like to me, what it like much more important and I, I know that I say this from a place of having had a lot of success um, that are that, like visible success and, and less visible failures that no one really knows about. <laughs> um, it's not, it's not so much about the success. It's about the success that, or the, about the confidence that success gives you or the confidence that like, um, like people knowing and saying good things about you. And yeah. for example, saying that I'm a go-getter here. Um, and, and like, that is not the only way to get that confidence. And finding that security in yourself is really what it's about. Um, and, and of course, the first step is to find security in like life and food and shelter and, and healthcare and all that stuff. But beyond that, finding security in who you, and in it like at, simultaneously with that stuff, finding security in who you are um, does not require you to like, to to like be Steve Jobs, yeah. Um, 
and and if you are thinking that uh, that to in order to to fe- to feel valuable and feel confident that you have to like match up with some imagined uh, future you or some some hero that you have, which is what I did for many years, um, then what you find is that you ne- you of course never get there because because there's always somebody who's more amazing than you are like especially inside of your own mind because that's what your mind is trying to do it's trying to find like it's just trying to find reasons that you're not <laughs> as valuable as you think a, a, as you are yeah that i is don't know so why true. but that is the thing that brains do yeah yeah you said a lot there. That. that's so true like i am definitely guilty of comparison and the moment like i was naturally lazy i was definitely like i am not a go-getter i am someone who cannot like get up and do anything um but i did little things and then i got praise from it people would go wow i can't believe you're doing that wow you're working so hard and then my brain went oh maybe i'm not lazy and the moment i had that thought i wanted to do more and then i defined myself as a go-getter even though there's like this deep like knowing that i'm actually not that kind of a person but i think you can like you said you can find that in other ways (laughs) yeah yeah, and a lot like a lot of the ways that I've that like I think that I have found it and that most people find it is that they like sign up they get signed up or they sign up for responsibilities where people require them to do things and yeah. they do those things. Whether little that's things, taking care stuff. of a child or whether that's little things and big things, whether that's doing the job that you have been hired to do or um helping a friend that you, you know, care about and are loyal to, like all of these things are like the opportunity to say like i have a responsibility like Mm. to create the responsibility and that's what gets you out of bed nothing like it doesn't like just like being then there are people like this i think that they are in the minority but there are people who are just like get up and go and like it's all about to them like doing like get having the most productive day possible because that's the thing that uh that they love um but for the rest of us it's about signing up for responsibilities and having to to fulfill those responsibilities. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it which was is more- uh, which now is like Do- Dodie and I have both made the mistake of signing up for too many responsibilities because we were trying to motivate ourselves <laughs> to do it stuff, back and now around. we have to, now we <laughs> now we have to undo it. Yeah, we have to undo the stuff. Yeah, too much faith in ourselves in oh. myself. This podcast, Dodie, uh, it's time for our sponsors, is brought to you by Getting Out of Bed in the Morning. Getting Out of Bed in the Morning. You don't do it because you want to. This podcast was brought to you by Sammy's Rabbit. Uh, rest <laughs> in peace to all of the imaginary rabbits who are dead and also to all of the Antons. <laughs> all of the Antons. Uh, this podcast <laughs> is additionally brought to you by Ham Hands. Your hands are now made of hams and they will solve world <laughs> hunger. <laughs> Slice them up, send them around. <laughs> this podcast was also brought to you by Apple Bottom Jeans, which apparently makes your butt look like an apple. <laughs> uh, I think you have to have a certain bottom to, to pull. Like, I don't think that I could have, a, have a, a, a bottom that looked like an apple, Doty. Hank, everyone can have an Apple Bottom Jean. Uh, apple Bottom, if they want, by wearing <laughs> Apple Bottom Jeans. I don't know. <laughs> Trying to be uplifting. Thank you. I, th- I, I am not ashamed of my butt at all. I think I have a fine butt. Uh, let's do, let's do like, uh, like one or two more questions before we get to the news from Mars and AFC Wimbledon, if that's okay with you. Sure. This question is from Mary, who asks, Dear Hank and Dodie, but mostly Hank, you recently said on the pod that there are nine missions on Mars right now, which got me thinking, do any of the rovers or orbiters ever catch one another? Like, do we ever get an image back from an orbiter in which a rover is, like, randomly photobombing in the Whoa. corner? Do they ever bump into each other? While I recognize I am completely anthropomorphizing the robots crawling around on Mars, it's something that I need to know desperately. Please help. May the force be with you, Mary. Wow. Uh, kind of. Definitely happens where, uh, and not unintentionally, but an orbiter will take a picture of, um, of a rover. And sometimes it, sometimes it just sort of like happens to happen. And other times they're like, we want to take a picture and see where it's at and see if we can like also take a picture of where it's parachute landed and stuff like that. But they are far enough away from each other that they are not going to run into each other on the surface yet. Though the Mars 2020 mission, sorry, I'm bogarting this question, Jody. I know that you want to t- tell us all about 
about Mars. The Mars 2020 mission uh, will have a thing where it collects samples. And then the idea is that a future mission will land near there and then go visit it and then pick up those samples and then shoot them back to Earth, oh my gosh. potentially. Or it will be visited by an actual human being who will collect those samples. So uh, They're giving this has never each happened, other presents. but it could. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it'd be really nice if like they were not all alone for like forever. Oh, no. Hank, stop it! Don't do this. I'll start feeling alone. empathy towards the. Oh no, here we go. <laughs> just like the rabbits. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's funny because like the 2020 rover will literally be like picking up rocks and holding onto them, oh. but not for any definite reason. Oh. Like maybe someday we'll be able to go pick up those rocks, but the, but like mostly it's just like I just thought like I liked this one and I like spent a lot of time with it, so <gasps> I decided like to keep it. Oh my gosh, they're you, just like me. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like that's me, Mr. Rover Man. Um, yeah, Mars, and that's <laughs> there's there's a little bit uh, to do with that that I'm going to talk about in today's Mars news. But before we get to that, one more question, Dodie. We oh, had so many good ones this week, and we got to a lot. This was a really good questions per episode rate um, for our for, for dear Hank and John. I feel like last last uh, time we got to like three. So our last question comes from Tessa, dear Hank and Dodie. On Hank's Snapchat today, he posted a video of a movement activated sink that kept being activated without there being anyone doing so. Hank then made a joke about it being a ghost with dirty hands. <laughs> Bad jokes aside, <laughs> this got me thinking. Would a ghost theoretically be able to activate things with movement sensors, like some sinks or those lights that turn on when someone enters the room? Or would they not recognize the ghost since he, she, they is not technically made out of mass? How do movement sensors work? Do they apply to ghosts or are they creatures made out of mass only? Memento Mori, <laughs> Tessa. Whoa. Also, where was uh, that sink? I, what? It was in an airport. I was in an airport and it was just like, it didn't like, it wasn't on all the time. It would just be like off and then it would be like, psh, oh. psh, and I was like, what's that? Like, what? Like, it's okay if you're like on and you're broken and you're just on, but if you're on and off and on and off and nobody's standing there, like definitely a, Tessa, uh, airport ghost. that wasn't a bad joke. That's funny. I love that. That's great. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, Tony. You're welcome. Um, the, uh, so first of all, I don't know that Tessa, I don't know, I don't know that I like the Tessas just assuming that ghosts have no mass. I, like, maybe they do. Oh, gosh. Uh, maybe they, maybe they interact, they seem to interact with light some, like, the, for the most part, stuff that interacts with light or can interact with anything has mass itself. So it seems like ghosts would have mass in, unless there's some kind of non uh, Newton, not non like Einsteinian, non like standard model physics happening here. Um, but I do know how uh, how the, uh, the the sensors work, and uh, and so it would depend. On the kind of ghost it was, oh, wow. um, if it was a, if it was a, a hot ghost, then it would work. So like I don't like so there's different categories of ghosts. There's hot ghosts, which are like when they're in the room, like they'll touch you and it'll be like, ugh, that was a wow. weird hot ghost hand. Cold ghost and then there's cold ghosts, the which like they give you cold feelings. And then there's wet ghosts, <laughs> which will make you wet. And then there's like sand ghosts, and they just like leave sand around. And then there's uh, there's just there's air ghosts that are just sort of like collected air, ah. and there's uh, there's pure pure water ghosts which are made out of uh, they, they're only underwater and they're just like more dense water, and then there's fly ghosts which are made out of bun a bunch of flies. Oh yeah, and um, so but so it, it, it depends on the kind of ghost they are. If they're if they're a fly ghost, definitely like gonna <laughs> activate that sink. But uh, the, it, the, those motion activated sinks are are actually not motion activated; they're heat activated. Oh, so wow. uh, it would have to be a hot a hot ghost to Is turn. Is that it why on. sometimes they don't work? Because my hands are cold. That's crazy. Maybe maybe it's because your hands are cold. I never thought about that, but I'm always like, come on, do the thing, like moving my hands wow. around, even though it's not about the movement it's about the heat so you actually want to keep it in front of there but if i feel like if your hands are like room temperature it's not going to turn on there you go there you go and you're like if you just happen to be a cold person what a disaster i love um, the term hot ghosts that is 
So great. <laughs> Hot ghost. Hot you don't ghost. you don't like fly ghost? No, absolutely not. Again, now my entire skin is crawling. No, moving away from bugs. <laughs> There's actually, there's two kinds of hot ghosts. There's the ghosts that are warm, and then there's the ghosts that are just very attractive. Ah, there you go. Hey, hey, ah, oh, ah, bad jokes aside. Ah, <laughs> ah, <laughs> ah, oh, man. Um, I just typed in AFC Wimbledon to Google News, because I know you didn't bring any. Yeah. So, uh, let's see. One hour ago, we got some, some news about former AFC Wimbledon and South End man joins his good friend at Leatherhead. So that happened Whatever at some point means. in the history of AFC Wimbledon. I wonder if I could try Have you ever noticed that like the towns in your country are, have weird names? Excuse me? What do you mean? <laughs> oh, Leatherhead. I don't know. I guess oh, yeah, towns okay. everywhere have weird names. Uh, just all... I'll, when I was in London most recently, I was looking at the subway stops. I was on the tube. I was like, no, that's the stops, the tube stops, I guess. Oh, yeah. And, and all of the names of the places where it was stop, like stopped, it was like a weird feeling of like nostalgia because they all the, all, I'd never heard of any of the places, but they all seemed like such English words. And oh. I live in a place where we speak English, but a lot of the places are named out of, after things that are not in English. Like they're named after Spanish things or French things or Native American words. And uh, like Montana obviously is not a, a an English word. It's a Spanish word. Oh. Uh, Florida, the other state that I'm from is a, is a Spanish word. Um, Missoula, the city where I'm from, is a Native American word. So, but like th- this weird like connection to like, oh, th- these places were named by people who have been like living here, living here from here, like not like came and conquered and like took over this area and and like got rid of the people who were living here, but living here and all the places like that, like a weirdly like just the names of the places made that more clear to me. Oh. And I just wanted to say that. <laughs> Good. Uh, I'm pleased. I always forget. Uh, That's the number one thing American people always talk about when they come over here. They're like, it's so old. It's so cool. And I forget. <laughs> I'm just so used to, you know, seeing a building that's like yeah. 500 years old. And I'm like, yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, well, in, in Mars news. Oh, yes. Do let me know. Um, so you guys know that you, you guys, <laughs> you, you, you Europeans... Uh, I'm I'm still calling you Europeans sure. in England, <laughs> uh, for the time being at least. Yeah. Um, you had a Mars uh, craft that was headed to Mars, and mm-hmm. earlier, uh, early, like last year in 2016, in October, um, it it got to Mars and then it just crashed into the surface of Mars. Oh, sad sad face. Oh no. Um, so uh, the the report of what happened has been concluded, and here's what happened. So when uh, so these crafts have on them a bunch of uh, just like in your your phone has a bunch of accelerometers that will tell you like what direction your phone is facing. So if you turn it sideways, it's uh-huh. like oh I know that I'm sideways now, and I'll take a sideways picture. Um, and they also can kind of tell how fast they're moving. Well, the space probes obviously have those as well, so they could tell how fast they're moving, how fast they're spinning, whether they've stopped or whether they're still moving. And uh, what happened was a bunch of those instruments got uh, overloaded when, I think the craft is called the Schiaparelli. I don't know exactly how to pronounce that, but the Schiaparelli... uh, at a at a crucial moment for not very long for like less than a second it spun very fast oh. before it corrected itself and in that moment when it was spinning very quickly as it entered the martian atmosphere because just that's what happens when you hit <laughs> atmospheres sometimes you spin and it's the it's for example the reason why that guy who jumped out of that red bull like space balloon <laughs> Oh, he yeah. pulled his ripcord early because he started to spin and he was spinning so fast that he, you know, if you spin fast enough, you will die. So in a, in a similar way, uh, this thing was spinning so fast that all of its instruments got overloaded and then suddenly it thought it had landed already. And it sent back a report basically and it was like, I'm on the surface of Mars. Oh. And then it stopped existing shortly thereafter and they found a giant crater that it had crashed into. So it thought it landed, but it was wrong. And so oh. it didn't do all the things to prepare for landing oh. and instead just crashed. No. 
So that's what happened. Oh, that's uh, so But sad. the good news is, the good news is that Schiaparelli, while an interesting and useful instrument, uh, a lot of what it was doing was testing out to see if the ESA's landing systems were good enough to put <laughs> on their much more expensive uh, rover that they're sending in 2020, and we discovered that they weren't. Not, yeah, so this not. problem will be fixed. Okay, good. <laughs> well, there you go. That was that was handy. Handy to know. <laughs> yeah, handy to know. Uh, so that is the news from Mars. Dodi, what did we learn today? I learned what apple bottom jeans are. I've never heard of them before. Well, uh, I've never mm. Googled it before. I've heard of them many a time, but now I know that it's just sort of big booties in jeans. <laughs> I learned that uh, Dodi has a friend, Sammy. Have I met Sammy? I don't know. You should. He's great. Okay. Well, aside uh, from well, all that, of the uh, is jokes. <laughs> great, except for the part where there's all the rabbit murder. Yeah, exactly. And uh, and uh, and we learned that Hank uh, we would not eat his own hands. Thanks. He would he would feed the world with them. Oh yeah, was that the answer that you would give? I, no, it wasn't. Like I don't believe that I could produce an infinite amount of ham from my hands. Like I just don't accept it. Then join me um, on the sun cream and, side. Uh, yes, and yes, definitely. At the same time, like, I would prefer for that not to happen either. <laughs> See, Unless it was on that. demand. Like, if it was only when I wanted it to, but if it was just like whenever I sweat, I sweated sunscreen? No, thank you. Okay. Alright, well, we can ask Sammy. Um. <laughs> oh, yes, and we learned that there are two different types of ghosts, uh, of hot ghosts, sorry, there are warm ghosts and incredibly attractive ghosts. <laughs> Thank you for joining me on this episode of Dear Hank and John, Dodie. Thanks for having me. I yeah. loved it. Uh, this podcast is produced by Rosiana Hals Rojas and Sheridan Gibson. It, our social media person is Victoria Bongiorno. Nicholas Jenkins edits the podcast, and our music is by the great Gunnarola. And as they say in our hometown, don't, don't forget, forget to be, to be awesome. awesome.